Salvia apiana. The name means bee sage, but it has become known by the common name white sage. This California native plant is a beautiful example of the mint family. It's a true sage and it has highly aromatic leaves and flowers, which are attractive to a wide variety of different pollinators. And the plant itself forms an important part of the botanical mosaic of Southern California's scrub habitat. California is divided into two distinct biological regions from north to south. Point Conception on the coast just northwest of Santa Barbara marks the place where the transverse mountain ranges meet the Pacific Ocean. These transverse ranges create a geographic and biological barrier. Slightly different species flourish to the north and south of this barrier. Here on the Morro Bay estuary, we are north of this dividing line. White sage occurs mainly in the southern region, so we don't have much or any of it growing natively in the habitat here in San Luis Obispo County. However, we do have this beautiful specimen in a pot here in our backyard. As you can see, this little plant is flourishing despite facing the challenge of a bent stem. Since it's happy enough to put out flowers and it's a beautiful summer evening, I decided to sit with it in the yard and do a bit of sketching. I begin by making careful observations of the plant. I'm trying to understand the plant accurately from the scientific perspective of botany but also from the perspective of symbolic art making. I nearly always begin my sketches using a red ochre color. This is my own celebration of the earliest pigments humans used on Earth. You can find variations of this red ochre color in nearly all of our most ancient artworks all over the planet. Salvia apiana is an important plant to a number of indigenous tribes across California. Recently, it has become a contentious plant because of over-harvesting by non-indigenous people. It has become a popular commercial product, and it's often marketed as having vague spiritual properties, often bordering or crossing the line into cultural appropriation. I don't see myself as having a connection to any of these particular spiritual or cultural properties. Instead, I see myself entwined in a deep and meaningful relationship with the land that raised me, the land of California and all of the habitats, ecologies, and landscapes inside of it. Painting a native California plant for me is a process of learning more about this bioregion about deepening and honoring the connection that I have with this landscape and everything that is unique about this place. After completing the foundational sketch in the yard, working from life, I take my setup into the studio where I can begin the digital painting process. This is a fun and experimental process, finding color and shape relationships that work within the painting to reflect the overall feeling which I have toward the plant. I often will try to incorporate symbolism that shows this plant's relationships with the world around it. Through the process of sketching, refining, and painting, I feel like I begin to understand the character of the plant. I find a voice within my own style that expresses the uniqueness of this particular species.
interested in the earliest styles of human art, the parietal cave art of the Upper Paleolithic, the symbolic design of folk traditions of cultures worldwide. Throughout art history, various movements have returned to these styles of symbolic design and studied from them, learned from them. There's something primary about them. I think they speak to our fundamental art-making impulse as human beings. We've always used graphic design and abstract symbolism to tell stories on an impactful emotional level about our connections to the living world around us. I believe that landscapes shape our personalities. The plants and animals around us shape who we are and how we are. One of the most incredible things about art is its ability to communicate this deep emotional connection to place. I think it's the root of why we as humans make art at all.